Hello and welcome to the TT Podcast, the podcast where we talk to one person from the world of the TT to discuss their lives, their journeys and their ambitions with the greatest motorsporting event in the world. And as you'll see, we're not in the studio, we're still over on the Isle of Man, still at the Mike's GP, which means we still have Lee Johnston next to me, all right? That's the closest I'm ever going to get to being on a game show, isn't it? Yeah. Lee, Lee Johnston. Cool to have a ring walk and stuff, wouldn't it? Like? Here's a question. What would your music be for a ring walk? Oh, Simply the best. I was thinking that, but it's a bit. That's I'm more too your. Sexy. That's more your era. And have you got any modern music in your head? I don't, no, <laughs> I, I have nothing. I'd definitely go for an eighties power ballad. Though. I'd like something really slow and depressing that no one could sing along to. Do you know what I mean? Just to get the mood right down. Because they're all in there. Out. They're all in there, getting drunk, having a right good time, <laughs> and you're not. So I think. What 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 game show would you be on? Oh. Uh, Nothing that revol- is there any that is there I like think a lack of catchphrase? No, I'm I'm not good at them. I've done that on uh, like at the bike show where you have to what's it called? You have to guess something out of a different word or that's you, an anagram. Yeah, see things like that. Catchphrase isn't an anagram I, game. But no, all right, we'll let we'll let that. I think you'd be good at it. Thanks. We'll leave it there. Julian Trummer, give me three facts about him right now. Go. Can you say his surname properly? Well, we'll find out. Go I guess. Again. I know. I'll ask him when he gets here. We'll ask him what is. I think it's Trummer. It could be Trummer. No, twenty quid right now he says he can. Bet. All right, we'll see. <laughs> Bet. We'll see. But come on, give me give me some facts about him because I believe that he is going to be there or thereabouts in the next two to three years. Yeah. The TT. Yeah. His progression rate has been good and steady and not risk worth. If people aren't taking math math massive risks to get to the point where they're at then that's a sign that they're still progressing yeah, yeah. still room there do you know what I mean if you're having big moments and things like that to get to the lower levels then it's not a good sign and it's similar in your in uh, in respect to you that he's is a massive cycling fan I thought you were going to say because he's also Austrian <laughs> He's Austrian, just like you. No, he is Austrian. You're not Austrian. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's he's really Takes his into fitness cycling. seriously. Yeah, yeah. Right, come on, then. Julian, willkommen. That's German, yeah. Does that mean you're common? <laughs> Julian Trummer, welcome to the podcast. Is that how you pronounce your name, Trummer? Trummer? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You t- <laughs> I mean, it's your name. It's not sensitive. No, I, it's it's, uh, it's uh, said Trummer in Austria. Well, there German, you go. That's how you say it. Trummer. 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 Like a I, I love you. Yeah, the way you just, all, all he them. just goes, oh, yeah, that's how you say it. And you said something completely <laughs> different to what he just said. Okay. Yeah, and all, all the English people say Julian Trummer. Yeah, so Trummer. I guess that's it. Right. Yeah. I don't have the um and the it doesn't bother you. No, you're not. Yeah. I don't mind. Good. Well, that's what that's what we're going with. Julian Trummer, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Fan of the podcast? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really? <laughs> He's lying. Yeah, no, no, no. F- I've seen I've seen plenty of them. To yeah. be fair, I follow Julian on his, his, his Instagram, and every now and again when he's training. And he'll take a picture of it. He'll he'll yeah. he'll have the little podcast. I can yeah, see but that logo. you struggle for content when you're on this. <laughs> with, you know, it's like that's, that's. But that's that's how he how much suffering he wants to go. I always, I always keep challenging myself for while being, you know while cycling. So what's the what can I how can I make it harder? <laughs> like just listening to you and just uh, dead for Thanks, two mate. hours and then. Thanks. Well, if you're a fan of the the podcast, you'll know what the first question is. Rolling up to no man's land, you kind of seen your team. You've rolled all the way up. Mechanics have said. Good luck, on you go. Right. You're into no man's land. You get that grab on that shoulder. You're waiting for that flag to drop. What is the feeling? How are you feeling? Especially going through no man's land before you set off. I'd say I'm, my, my mind's blank. Just it's before. Start. It, it, for me, it, it already starts a bit earlier. Yeah. Like, you know, when, when you get after, after, when you're on your own, that's when I'm already in the race. I'm just focused on what's lying ahead of me. Yeah. But up until that point, I'm just fucking shitting myself. So. <laughs> Just scared, honestly, like super nervous and, and tension is just massive and yeah, just scared. What are the nerves? Is it <coughs> to get a good result, to make sure you get it back safe? To like, stay alive. Right. <laughs> it's, it's for me, at yeah. least it's for me. Don't know don't know how, um, what it's like for all of the other riders, but I always keep to, or kind of like keep struggling with it. So I always, my first aim is always to kind of like make sure I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah. Which sounds a bit rough, but that's that's what it's like for me. That's the nature and, of but the then things. again, also like you wanna you wanna do well and you know progress and 
get quicker. So it's just the whole thing, really. Yeah, but then once the clutch goes, just just f- focused in the present and just yeah, absolutely in the zone. Yeah. Before Enjoy. we uh, before we start the podcast, we were just having a discussion about uh, MotoGP or the TT. And essentially, your life is the TT. You would take a senior TT win over a yeah, MotoGP race, absolutely. a MotoGP championship. It's it's that important. But where did the the love for the TT come from? Uh, to be honest, for me, it happened like really early. My my first memory about the TT is when I was like five, six years old with my parents. And my parents and their friends were talking about a like crazy motorbike race somewhere in England, where you know public roads get closed and people just race their bikes around there. And I, I was like. What what the fuck is this? And <laughs> and I was asking them, and they told me, yeah, that's the Isle of Man TT. That's my very first first moment about the TT. And, and were they fans I, of I the TT? I was hooked ever since. Were they fans of it? Oh, not really. Just, no, no. So they, they were just, just saying they, ju- they were just saying they want to come over <laughs> at, at some point and and have a beer and just watch the lunatics go racing. <laughs> and yeah, now now it seems I'm <clears> one of them. So. And were were they bike people? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they were but hobby exactly hobby yeah. bike but people. But ju- just just riding on public roads. Yeah. And, yeah. That that seems to be quite normal with like I've met a lot of German fans as such and none of them are like they're not like track day riders they're not yeah. they're just like ride their bike as like maybe a sports tour or a bike but they come here to watch and they don't they don't even they, go to they watch do a massive bike amount of miles yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's it almost it's as much the journey here and then being here to watch this crazy event and then the journey home uh, you speak to some of them and they don't watch World Super Bikes they yeah. don't watch MotoGP they come to the TT because it's like this well it is a massive yeah. I mean I wouldn't say they're as crazy as the people over here but they're definitely really crazy <laughs> about bikes crazy. Yeah. yeah so but what about the Austrian fans though don't think there's a lot <laughs> <But> <laughs> no I think I think it's getting more and more each year but um yeah could could be more I think yeah, well, well your job. That's your job. I'm not there yet to <coughs> kind of like, not at the top at the minute or yet. So, yet. so yeah, hopefully they'll. So you got the you got the bug just literally from that conversation, and then from there it, it, it that's, started that's, to stem. That's my very first memory uh, <clears throat> about the TT. Yeah, and, and it was I want to go racing because I want to race the TT, or did you just want to go racing? I, to be honest, um, I, I kind of like lost it when I was a bit older, and then it just got back to me when I was. I'd say 15, 14, 15, mm-hmm. had a little moped and was just riding, you know. On the roads. Yeah, like a lunatic there, yeah. <laughs> just doing stupid <laughs> stuff with my video camera. And, and I had like a, a tiny little road, which was my personal TT, where I did like 80K. Nice. So that, that, that were yeah, kind of like my beginnings. And yeah, but I never thought about actually getting here. So it just, I don't know, evolved. And, and, and what's the racing scene like in Austria? Because... I guess there isn't much of one. How many how many circuits have we got? We've got Salzburg Ring. Yeah, Red Bull uh, Ring, Red Bull which Ring. is pretty pretty shit anyway. So. Right, but and they, they put in a fucking new <laughs> chicane. <laughs> it just got worse. Um, yeah, no, no, that's about it. But there's plenty of tracks like in Hungary and Croatia. Italy. So you're close to everything else because you're right on the border yeah, into I'd Slovenia, aren't you? Three and six hour drives. So yeah, no, it's not too bad. And I mean, there's no road races in. No proper ones. Yeah. No. So no. like in, but in Germany there is because I've like Froberg. Froberg, and, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's a good one. But yeah. you know Froberg, it's I'd say I always call Froberg is like a short circuit with yeah painted it, white it, lines. So it's on the road, but there's lots of runoff. But the I I went, I've only been once and I thought oh this is so safe, but they plow the fields like or I don't know if oh, it was yeah, just they've got so like, there's like big ridges you know like with the ploughed field yeah. and when you're doing 150 mile an hour it looks like a a car but I looked out but this guy crashed in front of me <laughs> and went into it and it yeah. just went the, everything just did, disintegrated I was like oh my god that's worse yeah, than, it, it would be worse than hitting it, a gravel like, trap yeah. and then I suddenly went oh this is not as safe as what <laughs> no. I thought it yeah. just seems to be like because you can see all the runoff area and yeah. the grass it, so no but still you know it's it's super smooth tarmac's great yeah. and no bumps whatsoever it's just and quite fast it's like it, quite fast. it's fast yeah, yeah. but um it's a good one. It's definitely a good yeah. one, but uh, I still consider wouldn't consider it a proper road race. So, and then, so it was off to short circuit racing then to begin with. Uh yeah, kind kind of. Um, the funny thing why I started racing was, um, I, of course I had a road bike, um, a Yamaha R six, and my dad. So you, sorry, Julian, you went from the moped to an R six. 
Yeah, when I was 18. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, I was older. I was 22. And that's how the licenses worked? You could jump on an RC? Yeah, yeah. Didn't that, that, that's, that's how you can do it in Austria, yeah. Brilliant. Um, and my dad knew that I was not the... Silly, a bit silly. Not the most intelligent <laughs> rider on, on public <laughs> roads, so he signed me in for a track that Red Bull ring. Right. To show me that I'm not a racer, that I can't do oh, it. To prove a point. Yeah. And no. I, but I was just, you know, absolutely fire, yeah, fire for it, and and it was just amazing. And at that point, I was like, I wasn't working out. I didn't do anything. I was just smoking and drinking and doing bad stuff. And really, didn't eat anything for a week. And so I was, I was a mess. Let's put it that way. And but that thing, that first track day, got me like I did three laps. Then I, I was so absolutely tight. done. Yeah. <laughs> But after that, I was absolutely hooked, and I knew that that's what I need to do for the rest of my life. So, do you feel like you were, however much of a mess you were in, is that because you didn't know what you wanted to kind of do with your life, or? I think so. Yeah. Now a couple of years afterwards, I think yeah, um, I was kind of like on a mission to find out what what's Searching. what's for me. Yeah, I did I did skydiving and and bungee jumping, and I used to be a skateboarder. That was like my really big first love, I'd say. Yeah. But got injured there and then it started out while i was injured i was kind of like 16 and then just got into drinking and smoking so got on a on a bad path <laughs> it, it makes you wonder how many people go through that and oh, never yeah. find their passion because yeah, yeah. had your dad not taken you there yeah you could have just carried on riding your road bike going through your, your life just kind of not really i i yeah. think this all that not all the time but like i see you go into any big city in England now, there's a lot of homeless people and kids in an estate that are, like, it's rough, do you know what I mean? And I always think, I'm, I wonder how many, like, world champions there is, there are people that could be world champions, because it's not like football, like you said, yeah. a lot of top football players are from a rough estate because you literally kick a ball against the wall. That's all you can do, yeah. That's all you can do. But no one's going in with a bike, taking them to a track day. I'd look, the, yeah. the, the, there would be, well, I don't know if there would be or not, but there has to be a lot of people that have immense talent probably the right attitude you know yeah, all the yeah, grittiness yeah. that you need to because they've had a hard life that's yeah. it, you know what i mean you definitely need the determination yeah too. so it, it, i i think that it's a random thought to have when you see like a homeless person or something rough but i actually <laughs> that's if he what could beat rossi i know you, you never know <laughs> it could be rossi in disguise well, that's, I mean, yeah exactly you, yeah you've no idea and that's just and for that, that's exactly he's just proved the point exactly yeah. because he well not he was obviously not that rough or <laughs> mad he was having a good day in partying but is, is he found his path and yeah no, I would say so yeah and it makes you wonder uh, you know like you said you, your dad wanted you to go to the ring to get it out of your system and realise you're not a racer but yeah. it, co it did completely the opposite it's backfired massively for his poor dad then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, it sounds like it's been 20 years ago but it, there was a, only a happened in 2014 and so I'm, I'm, I would still consider myself kind of like a bit of a yeah. rookie and yeah it all progressed really quickly after that. So yeah, four years after that, then you you were here for the first time. Oh uh, no, two the, years. Two years? Yeah. The, the, At the uh, Manx. I was a newcomer at the Manx in yeah, yeah, 2016. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 2018 for the yeah. two years. So you don't even race like at, at club level. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. If I if I keep talking about it here, so it's, not like <laughs> it's, it's too late well, now. Yeah. Isn't it? It's too late. Um, it doesn't matter. You've already got your no, license yeah. now. <laughs> it it's a good story now, but um, <laughs> I kind of like tricked my way into the into the Manx Grand Prix. So I had to kind of like keep telling them that I'm that big IRC guy from Europe, and <laughs> this is I didn't do anything to that moment. <laughs> so what? none of my first road race was um, was the Manx Grand Prix. But you told them that you yeah I, I did like I, I did lo loads of motocross and and road racing in Europe and <laughs> hill climbs and whatever. So I didn't do anything of them. So. That's brilliant. And thankfully, they invited me to come over, and and yeah, <laughs> I was lucky. So, so, the f so but, but first of all, if anyone else is trying to chance their arm, they will check now. <laughs> so don't don't try and don't try and do this because they will check now yeah, because no, he's yeah. he's ruined it for everyone nah, else. I definitely wouldn't recommend, but it it made sense for me because I, I always wanted to get here, and I think I, I don't know. It just would have been really hard to get here actually. So I think I always had to tricked myself a bit into yeah, it. Well, you would've, it would have took another year or two because you would have had to go and do them actual races. Yeah, but th th the then I might have been scared about it. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I always say, like now, it, I think it's been good that the Manx Grand Prix was the first race I did, the first road race. Yeah. Because after that, everything's easy. Yeah. 
Well, and and I, I always yeah. treat it with, you know, loads of respect. I prepared myself. Um, did I think all the right things to do? Yeah. So, 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 what did you do? Especially being in Austria, to so to get over here and do laps is is a difficult thing. Yeah. No, but I still flew over a couple of times. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. So you came over, just did your laps in the cars. Hire a car that uh, had traditional things. <laughs> yeah. Well, watch YouTube. Yeah. I mean that that was the most, the part that I did the most back home, just watching onboards and. And my thing was always um, start the onboard, learn the first four, three, four corners, yeah. back to the start line. Yeah. Until I was at corner six, seven, <coughs> back to the start line. So I was watching when I was already, let's say, at Gooseneck, I did the first half of the track. Like That's what I did. For did 15, you? Yeah, times. For, yeah, because I, I couldn't keep, well, I don't know, different people learn different ways, but my brain had to, I had to know what was coming. And then the second I would go, oh, I don't know what's next. Then I'd go back and then I'd learn, you know, because right, yeah, yeah. then it's in the bank. Whereas if you go, if you're sure to watch and, and you can see, just because you can see what's coming, you you need to be fit to predict what's coming, not, yeah. not what you can see. And that was the only way I could. Plus, if I if I sat there relaxed <clears throat> and I got to like 12 or 13 minutes, I'd fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is, yeah. I don't know, you'd think it's mad, yeah. but I was literally going, oh, and I would, if you were not, whereas if you were concentrating and thinking, right, I have to know this is left, right, back here, yeah. then you're engaging. Whereas if, if you're just watching, it's like, yeah. it does put you to sleep. So, so, you, yeah. so you're fantastic between here, between uh, the grandstand and yeah, quarter, bridge. quarter bridge. You've yeah. done that a million times. <laughs> yeah. We've only done the, the back end once yeah. or twice. Well, the other thing I, I like to ask people, well, I say this as if I've been here a long time, but people that watch a lot of onboards, and then the first feeling of the difference of watching an onboard and because and the, there's so many sensations that we joke about, like the time you get to the bottom of rail, yeah. your sofa doesn't give you the feeling of jumping, nope. you know what I mean? Nope. It's like a completely, what was that like? Or um, did you think, yeah, did you still I, I, think you, you knew it or did you get there and go, no, holy shit? I, I, this I, is I was, you know, the first lap is obviously yeah. the, the speed control <clears throat> lap behind the marshal and I was, I think behind Jamie Card on a yeah. 250. Um, yeah, couldn't keep up. No chance. And what were you on? You on, uh, on the TC Racing Honda CBR 600. Yeah. Which is the same team I'm riding yeah. this year. Or, or still or the, or at the Classic. No, but um, couldn't keep up with him. Just scared. My, my brain wasn't used to, you know, <laughs> keep it pinned on a public road. Yeah. Because so, you've never raced on a public road, yeah, yeah. even though you told I, everyone. No, no, that, that's the thing. You, yeah. you, you come here and you. you couldn't I, I mean, even tell anyone that he was scared because they all <laughs> thought he'd done a load of races. I, I did all the, prep, the right preparations, you know. But um, when I did the speed control lap, I came in. I rang my dad and I thought, "What the fuck? It's a bad did idea." I, yeah. yeah. What have I Just up scared. For? Yeah. I was like, "This is not not a game. This is dead serious." Do you think about quitting? Do you think yeah. about stopping? Yeah. That's and being honest. I, I, I yeah. did the same. And then the, the, the next mistake <coughs> just after speed control lab was that I would, you know, back in the day you were allowed to stand in the pits. And then all like yeah, yeah. you guys, the quick TT stars, um, went past me like half a meter in front of me <laughs> with <laughs> six gear flat out. Michael Dunlop, uh, Lee, all them guys flying past. And I was like, fuck. You know, what yeah, I'm doing <laughs> yeah. So, and that's when I thought, oh, that's not for me. And thankfully, the first clear lap that I got was was yeah. But any short. anyone that's honest, that like I Milky was my I rid off, and like we're all a little bit cocky or arrogant because that's like anybody in any sport that does well yeah. has to be. Can't be too bad. I know, that. I know. <laughs> and I literally thought, oh god, Milky's gonna just ride around. I want to be off here. Mm. And it was me and Carl Harris, and we were friends. So I said, you know, we'll keep swapping. You know, like so we both get a look at what he's doing. We got like five or six miles in. I looked around at Carl and he was like, Phew. I was like, we can't even keep up. Do you really? know what I mean? I was like, he's, he's going so fast and he, and he wasn't. But it was like, because the arrogance of thinking you knew the track and these yeah. sorts of things and you weren't sitting on the sofa anymore. You were literally going over these bumps and jumps and tipping in and sunlight, no sunlight. It's like all these things. The, the thing for me was like, I knew that it's a straight, like so be yeah. straight. I knew you can do flat out six gear yeah. here and it's just straight. Yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. When you're watching a video, the guy's just sat there going, ah, and you're like, oh, he'll get around this kink and then he'll break. So you know that. But when you're on the bike for the first time, you don't know how long it's going to take you to get to that kink. Yeah, then yeah. you don't know how long after that kink you have to break. So you're you're literally, well, they call it like meerkatting. So you're sitting going, 
yeah, tucking yeah. in and then sitting up and down. So you're like, it, the anxiety that brings in you, but everybody is the same, you know. And, and, and usually it feels a bit quicker on the back than the yeah. airport. So <laughs> like Lee said, yeah, you're always kind of like, oh, where's it what's, coming? What's coming? Yeah. What's yeah. coming? So what made you go, go back out on it then? If you've come back in, you've phoned your dad, you're like, this is not for me, but... I just I thought, just give it a go, you know, on a clear lap. Like, I also think it wasn't good being behind so many other riders, you know. Yeah. Like Jamie said off, and I think I was fourth or fifth ah, in the yeah, group. So. And I couldn't see anything. So I think that didn't help. And, mm. like, the first clear lap on my own, there was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so you were following other people that yeah. didn't know yeah. Yeah. where they were going, whereas we were I, we were lucky that there was maybe not many our year at the TT or something, and there was literally me and Carl had Milky, and he was like, observant enough he would look around to see where we were and we would try and keep up enough to swap and yeah. you know so it was like i had a, a really good first lap it still scared the absolute shit out of me but it was like the best case scenario yeah, whereas yeah. you were following three other people that also didn't know where they then, were you going know, the, 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 the reason would be that you actually learned you know the kind of like the land yeah yeah but the people still yeah, and uh, you're you're yeah, yeah. The so they, they just blocked the whole view for you yeah. so yeah yeah, but I got through that, thankfully. But that's it, is you know, you, you can jump on your R6 on the road and you can go out and you can not even feel any fear and you can do stupid things and you've got cars coming towards you, you've got cars going yeah. the other way. But here you've got yeah, still like you say, when you it? get that when you get that open road, you can take that time a bit more to, to go, I can use all of this road now and you yeah. can start to kind of find your but lines. I think, you know, on public I, I don't even ride anymore on public roads, but because I think I do too think dangerous. it's too dangerous, yeah. But um, I, th I think the difference is on public roads, you, you do that for five to ten seconds, maybe. Yeah. Whereas here, you, you do that just <laughs> all the way. Uh, fucking <laughs> 60 minutes. <laughs> so, what was the difference between coming in from that first lap when you were scared to that second clear lap? Big relief. Big relief. You felt like you could big, do it. Big smile. So, yeah. And then, then I knew that that's it. Yeah. That's what I want to do. How, how many it's laps crazy. do you think. Um, until you got the feeling of, oh, I actually, you know, uh, for me, it was like, I didn't really enjoy it until I'm going to say 10 or 15 laps because I was not sitting going. Maybe I was a bit lazy with learning and stuff, mm. but until I literally went, I was riding the bike and not still going, oh, this is a left. Oh, this is, you know what I mean? Where you actually yeah. got into a rhythm. Can you remember that for, I can, I remember the feeling of getting back to the pits and going, oh, this is actually enjoyable, uh, you know, yeah. instead of. Not shit on myself, yeah. but not stressing about. Uh, to be honest, I think it was already after the first lap because I didn't, yeah. I didn't do any stupid speeds. I wasn't quick. Uh, I started off my first, my first, very first lap was 100 miles per hour, yeah. and then I that's just still, did that's still 102. Fast. Like with that's each not. lap, like 102, 104, 106, 108, yeah. and I was always like when we when the Manx Grand Prix started, I was way back in the in the result sheets or in the bottom of the result sheets and then it just kept progressing whereas you know the front guys kind of like stayed there yeah and by the end of the practice week i was i think with within top six top sevens but i always See just it, kept yeah. that yeah. yeah and i never rushed into anything and i never scared myself so i think yeah it wasn't was too bad yeah. so here's a question i've always wondered do you treat the circuit as one circuit so if you think of like donnington like, I've ridden Donington a few times, and you think Redgate, Craner, Old Airpin, Schwanz. You can remember all the corners. All of, all 12 of them. <laughs> but it kind of, one flows into the next, into the next, and then you're back to the start of the lap, and then you do it again. But here, do you kind of take, because you can, when Milky teaches you, he does break it up a little bit, and like the first section, you'd class as up to Balacrane. So do you think, and go here, 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 until you get to maybe Cronky Body Straight, and then go right. I'm into the next section, and then it flows again. Yeah. Or for, does it all flow in one? For me, I used to just break it into like the, the places where I go. You can rest here. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So like just after Crosby jump, you I know it's still hectic, Evan, but you've got a little bit of a straight, and you go. You've had that hecticness of the star and Evan. There's a little straight there. Remember to breathe. Yeah. You know what I mean. And mm. then you've got Solby, mm. and then the mountain. Yeah. You know, and and I not that there were intersections, but that would be a conscious thing. It'd be the first, it'd be a time when you wouldn't be going right. This I need to break here. I need to tip in here. You would be literally going. I need to breathe here. Good nothing leads yeah. into yeah. that. Does yeah. Yeah. You've got a little bit of time. Yeah. Obviously, there is always something else yeah. coming, but that was my at the time I was like oh, because at the start you, you, you're you holding on for you know what I mean you're, you're ready to pull the handbars off this yeah. thing for no reason do you know what I mean 
uh, uh, my first days, my dad had to open my hands <laughs> because I was holding on so tightly yeah. that when I got back in into the pits, they, they had to open my hands yeah. because it was just... And you're in this on. position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Think about that, that's crazy. Yeah, no, but I, I always just keep focused on what's coming next. So next corner, next corner, next corner. Yeah, so, so even with those straights, you're, especially Solby, you're thinking... Solby Bridge. Just what's what's next. Yeah. yeah. And how far in advance are you thinking of those those corners? Because if you're thinking of the corner while you're in it, it's too late, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think you're just always aiming for the next corner, isn't it? Right. And then it's just... The if if you're in the zone, but then again, you, there are certain days where, where it's not going as easy as you would want to, so then you start thinking stupid stuff. What's, what's to have for, for dinner or... You should yeah. be thinking that wrong. Oh, thinking if, if, if anything wrong uh, yeah. wrong with the bike, or yeah. you, you just start, you know, getting out of that zone and just start thinking stupid things. That that normally comes though when something's not going right, the yeah. bike's not handling right, and you just think, oh, this is a bad lap, and you've yeah. still got like you talk about like Donington, you're back in twenty seconds, you know, and even if you yeah. have a bad lap, the the last half of the lap, you've still got fifteen minutes of needing to concentrate needing to get in and you can't coast here you can't yeah pull off well you can pull off and get back but it'll take you longer to get back the road way next, yeah the, so the, the loop that that's probably the only thing but when things are going right yeah you're in absolute yeah. you know you mm. could hear a pin drop even though there's all this wind noise and everything of of connection but I, for me that only happens when things aren't going right or you're not in in the, the chance of either winning or you know being yeah. in the race or you, 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 there's something that maybe electrical problem or something like that that's when it's or it starts raining or something you're like oof it's not for me how many times that happened a few times yeah really? not not real bad but you can because you're such a big place you could get this and they always have a flag out and it, it needs to be bad you know not bad now they're pretty sharp on it but you imagine years ago when they used to ride in the in the oh, wet no I, I, that, I just wouldn't even there'd be no point in me going out it's bad enough riding at the northwest in the wet. Do you know what I mean? But you'd still, you would still <coughs> go out though, wouldn't you? Because everyone else would go out. Well, yeah. I think them. you would, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, Plus, I'll, if someone's paying, you like it's your job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't just turn up for work and go, not today, lads. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's a bit that it's like football players. Really yeah. out there, lads. I'm not not for me today. <laughs> it's a bit too cold today. <laughs> <laughs> so at your Manx, like you say, you were you were around the bottom, and then you just worked your way up, and then you ended up finishing second in that newcomers race. Yeah. How did that feel? Oh, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it was nice. Were you happy with that, or do you think you could have won, or you know, because some people, some people finish second and they've come from fifth and it's it's massive. I or mean, they were in the chance of winning, and they finish second and then it's the same result, but it's like, yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's like when when we got to that race, um, we weren't thinking about doing podiums or anything. So, yeah, so. but. Then I got second in that race, and the day before we we lost the best practice day because the engine blew up, so so I lost four laps there, and we still keep talking about it. Who knows what would have happened, you know, if yeah, we yeah. get those four laps in? But yeah, the, I w I was just chuffed a bit, you know, to to actually stand on a podium, yeah, you know, over here. So it's a, they've scrapped the newcomers race now, haven't they? Yeah, because be, I guess because of the. I, I, I actually yeah I I didn't I just didn't come to the Manx and stuff and then when I started coming like classic racing it sort of blew my head a little bit that there was a, a race just for all these newcomers because I was like that 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 was it's quite a lot of pressure because absolutely because absolutely. you know if you're normally a newcomer right and you were going out to race with people that were already in the Manx you wouldn't have it in your head that you had a chance of winning so yeah. therefore it's a lot safer whereas if you're going out in the new and you're like well i'm the best newcomer or i'm yeah. you know yeah. that's that's like a lot of and i don't know how they didn't think of that 20 <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? now, and i'm not i'm not an intelligent person by any means but the first thing i literally thought was why is all these newbies why racing together to and going out like it was like yeah. crazy in my head yeah i don't know what the yeah how many accidents there was because someone was pushing for the but it must have it must have happened. It, oh, without without any shadow of a doubt. But then again, I think there's there's always pressure here. I think it, also when you come to the TTs and you come up, kind of like a lot of people expecting big things from you. And who's the quickest newcomer at mm. the TT? I think there's always pressure. So yeah, I I think if you don't have the right mindset to to race here, it's always dangerous. And 
Well, yeah, that's it. You're always going to put pressure on yourself, and the, and and you've said it a few times yourself, Lee, that you're the most pressure will always come from from yourself. But that's not necessarily to to get a result, though, is it? It's all, it's to do your best, but not necessarily be the fastest newcomer. For me personally, the most dangerous part was after the newcomers race, not not doing because the then you expect because, it. Yeah, yeah, because I, I thought, oh, I'm the man. I was sick. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then I could like the marshals actually told us to calm down after newcomers yeah. race because they knew that's kind of like the you know the time who, frame where who was that barty or milky or uh i can't remember um, really but yeah. it, it was one of them uh, of the manx guys so just so you're not too big for your boots like all of a sudden yeah. like, all right, and, I'll, and I'll show these boys who have been that's what it actually happened to me I, on, on the on the next lap out being out there just could notice oh that was close here like just two inches away from yeah. the wall and you know clip the curbs and you have to have a way big yourself calm yourself like, down yeah. now um, you think even after all his ARCC experience <laughs> and everything, he just turned up first road race and he fully expected to win. This is brilliant. Isn't that's, it? Well, that's, <laughs> but then I looked at that result and gone, yeah, he, he, yeah. yeah he's genuine. He I'm here see. now. This yeah. is it. I, I, I was quickest newcomer that year as well. So, no, no, I was happy with that year. It was a good one. Did 128 on the last lap, but I felt like in better conditions i think it yeah. could have been already 130. it came so easy to me like i wasn't forcing really? it or yeah. trying it um and i still feel like i'm i'm still doing quite big jumps in progress uh, in progression yeah um and so sound might sound stupid but i i, I think I, I could do 132s next year so that episode will be out and the first place you can see it is right here on tt plus next week until then see you later lee or shall we say, Alfie Is that what it is? What's good in tags? That's hello. Hello.